Hi everyone, this is Bama from Bama Crochet Creations. If you've purchased a pattern from me, on the first page of the pattern, there's a tip that says how I calculate how much yarn I need. And it also indicates the scale of the creation of that pattern. So if you wanted a throw gan size, I do a lot of my patterns in the half double crochet corner to corner or the mini. When you do it that way, throw gan size is roughly 120 by 120. And I measure that on a gauge of two half double crochets per inch. So we'll get into how to determine your size and your gauge and how to, how to alternate that or change that a little bit. But what I wanted to show you right now is the methods of doing the corner to corner crochet stitch. I have a sample of the blocks that I've done in the double crochet, sample of blocks I've done in the half double crochet, and a single crochet. This one is normally just called corner to corner. This one is called corner to corner mini. This one is called corner to corner micro. So what I've done today is I've made swatches with the um, different variations. Now also in the file section of my page, you'll be able to find the uh, new chart that I created that shows how to do all of these. In the chart, the double crochet formats are done in pink, the uh, half double crochets are done in blue, and the micro is done in purple. Believe it or not, that's purple. <laughs> all right, so here's what I've done. So for the first, uh, variation okay or version one of the corner to corner double crochet this is a chain stitch at the beginning when you're starting your uh, starting the project and then you double you do three double crochets in the last three stitches on the hook so in the fourth fifth and chain sorry of that chain stick that you just did you will do the half double cro sorry the double crochets then when you're starting the next row, you flip it, you do chain three and three double crochets again in the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain. When you do the next block, you slip stitch, then you're doing a chain three and then three double crochets in that gap or that loop that was created from the previous block in the previous row. This is version one. Version two is at the beginning excuse me, let me just move these out of the way. You're going to chain five. You're gonna do one double crochet in the third, fourth, and fifth chain. So very similar to this one here. However, what happens is, is that you're doing the same amount of stitches, the three double crochets, but this gap right here is a little smaller. So what happens is, is you've done the five, you've double crocheted in the fourth, fifth and I'm sorry <clears throat> the third fourth and fifth chain next row you've done the exact same five then you've done three four five when you're doing the next block you do the chain to attach it and then you're doing three half sorry double crochets in there so it's created it's made this hole that's here and I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. You can really see the holes are defined there. When you do this one, you stretch it out. They're not quite as big. So your project isn't as holy. All right. Now for the third one, the third method version. So here's what we have here. And what we've done is instead of chaining six, as in the first one, five in the second one, we're actually chaining four at the beginning and then we double crochet in only two of the chains. We've double crocheted in the last two chains. So in the third and the fourth chain, we've done a double crochet. We repeat that for the second row or at the beginning of each row. And then for the blocks in between to the end, we chain two and then two double crochets at each of the gap. And again, this has made it even smaller. Oh, the holes, I'm really stretching that out, I apologize. So what happens is, is that when you have the three of them stacked on top of each other, because again, the holes are smaller and those stitches, the double crochets have a smaller area to do it. Here's the size difference. 
All right, so we have the double down here using version one, the double version two, and the double version three. So what's happened is that because those holes are smaller, the gaps are smaller, it's created a smaller project. So at the beginning, when I say in my projects that it says the size of the pattern is measured at a scale of two blocks per inch, you want to use your measuring tape or gauge rule or whatever you have and you want to make sure that this gap right here is two per inch. Now that applies mainly for this for the half double crochet I apologize this one here would be three quarters of an inch for the first one so an inch and a half for this gauge if you were doing it with a standard uh, double crochet all right for uh, version one, two, and three of the standard one. Okay, so I'm going to show you this one again. So this is the one here with the half double crochet method. So it's blue for the mini. And this one here is the larger one. So version one, you chain five, you half double crochet, you're doing three half double crochets in the, uh, pardon me, third, fourth, and fifth chain. You're rotating at the beginning, you make that same one, chain five, one half double crochet in the third, fourth, and fifth chain. And then you attach it, and then you wanna do a chain two, and then three half double crochets. So this one is, like I said, in the patterns where I have a half double crochet or a mini stitch, you're doing two blocks per inch. So this measurement right here, stretch it out here, probably not gonna be an inch now. <laughs> um, this here would be an inch. All right, an inch, an inch, same this way. So if your gauge is a little bit more than an inch and you're okay with that, that's fine. If it needs to be a perfect size that you're making for a bed or you want the throw size to be perfect, 120 by 120 or 60 inches by 60 inches, then I would suggest just reducing your size of your hook that you're using just down half a size. Okay, or one size if you're going by the letters in the US or in Canada instead of a 4.5 mil or metric, then do a four mil. Um, what this does is again, this makes it smaller and smaller, makes it a little bit tighter, okay? And then your gauge might be well. I suggest doing a swatch using the hook that you plan on using, the yarn you plan on using until you have that gauge right before you start your project. Believe it or not, I do this with all of my projects. Even ones that I, I know that this hook with this yarn is going to be um, one inch. I always worry that my tension might be a little off, so I just kind of want to make sure, all right? So again, I've done this one. This is method one of the mini corner to corner or half double crochet. This one here is, I'm sorry, version one. This one here is version two. Now this one here is, instead of chaining five, like on this one, you're chaining four, and you're doing only two half double crochets in this instead of three is in this one. So you chain four, and then you do one half double crochet in the third and fourth chain. You do the same at the beginning of each row, but uh, for the end of each, uh, from the first block onwards, you do a chain two, two half double crochets in each of the holes or what I call the gaps. Um, and then you attach it and then repeat that to the end. This is number three or version three. This is a chain three, one half double crochet in the second and third chain. So this one here, you chain five. This one here, you chain four. This one here, you chain two. Or I'm sorry, chain three. But you only, you do three half double crochets in here, two in here, and two in here. So what happens is, again, like the standard corner to corner, I'm gonna put these on top of each other here in the same way that they are done. There we go, like this and there. So you see a little bit of a size difference, okay? Not a huge one from the version two to the version three, but there is a little bit, it could add up over the course of a blanket, right? So this one here, you have the larger one, which is version one, version two, and version three. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the micro, which is done with the single crochet. Now I'm gonna apologize right off the bat because I could not do version two and version three. I am a tight crocheter, and unfortunately what happens is it does, it affects the tension, it affects whether I could get the uh, hook inside there, I was flustered, I couldn't do it. So I've only done version one of the micro, and version one is a chain four, and then one single crochet in the third and fourth chain from the hook. 
Then when you're starting each row, you do the same thing, a chain four, one single crochet in third and fourth chain from the hook. Now the continuing to the end of the row, you do a chain two, two single crochets in each of those gaps. Okay, you continue to do that to the end, then when you flip it again, you do the chain four, one single crochet in the third chain from the hook, and then continue with the standard chain two, two single crochets. So that is my tutorial on this. I do apologize. I get, like I said, my tension's a little off, but um, I, I think you're getting the idea. Um, and again, if you look at the size difference with all of these, you will see that, you know, every one of them is a little bit different. Now, the interesting thing is, is that the version three of the mini, which I found very much easy to do with the half double crochet, is pretty close to the version one of the micro. So when you're doing your patterns and you're doing and you want to figure out how, how big you want it to be, how many rows, how many columns, or the finished product, then you know what, just, you know, try and keep that in mind. You might be able to, instead of doing the, the micro, you may be able to do the mini, but version three. Uh, it's your choice, it's what you want to do. But it is, like I said, this is showing definite differences in the stitches. Um, I do have another tutorial on uh, YouTube here that shows um, that you, you know, there's some things that you can, some pattern that you can, you know, alternate and change uh, to make the different sizes. And then you're basically getting up, you know, three patterns for one, like the 120 by 120 is a throw size if you do it in a half double crochet. But if you do it in the standard double crochet, and I'm talking about the big one, then you end up with a queen size blanket. If you do it in this one, then you end up with a nice, you know, big pillow size for a, for a child. Um, this would be a 30 inch pillow. But that would be using the same 120 by 120 pattern in, cor in corner to corner. You could also do it in a single crochet if you wanted to, but you couldn't use the written part of the pattern. You could use the graph, but you couldn't use the, the written part because the written part is going for this way and the, and the single crochet goes across this way. But the graph would be the same. And I do offer my graphs in, in, in several sizes in the uh, when you buy a pattern. So, you know, you, technically you get four patterns for one. So I hope this was helpful for me. I, I did this to be able to show you because there is some confusion about, can I just do it in the standard, you know, uh, corner to corner? And I tried to explain it. So maybe this is a little bit helpful or more helpful for the people that are a little bit more visual. Uh, this has been Bama from Bama's Crochet Creations. Have a great day.